Welcome to my deep dive learning path, where I show you everything about AWS Lambda extensions to more easily integrate Lambda with your favorite tools. I'm Julian Wood, a senior developer advocate for serverless at AWS. This video is part of a whole series. If you're wanting a good grounding on what a Lambda extensions are, start at the first video to get up to speed. In this video, I'm going to be taking an even deeper look at the Lambda lifecycle and see how you can build an extension using the extensions API to integrate your own tools. I'll walk through the timeline in even more detail showing all the API calls available. This one's gonna get deep. In the previous video, I went through how the extensions API builds on the existing runtime API. Extension authors use the extensions API to register for lifecycle events, and in response to these events, run some code and extensions can also subscribe to the logs API to receive logs. Here's the full Lambda lifecycle with extensions. The way to view the timeline is that it runs from left to right. There are three components that are involved in the timeline. The runtime, which manages the function invocation and communicates with the runtime API. This is the HTTP endpoint within the execution environment to receive invocation events from the Lambda service, forwards them to the function, and returns the function responses back to Lambda. The extension or extensions themselves. Extensions can use the extensions API to register for function and execution environment lifecycle events, such as invoke and shutdown, and in response, run some logic or another process. Extensions can also use the logs API to receive logs directly from the Lambda service. And the function, which receives the invocation events from the runtime. The function runs your application code to do your business processing and itself may talk to external systems and then returns a response back to the runtime, which sends it on to Lambda. Here's the runtime API endpoint, the runtime calls to get those function invocation events. You can see the API path is slash 2018-0601, which is the runtime API version, and then the path slash runtime. AWS Lambda Runtime API is an environment variable Lambda makes available to point to this address. As it's in the execution environment, it resolves to localhost 127.0.0.1 on port 9001. The extensions API uses the same Runtime API environment variable, but communicates with the extensions API path 2020-0101 as the version and then the path slash extension. The logs API version is 2020-0815 and then the path slash logs. Starting at the beginning, Lambda creates the execution environment with the configured resource. It either downloads the files from for a zip archive function and then adds the Lambda layer files which contain the extensions. Or for a function packaged as a container image, it builds the execution environment from the image which includes the extension files as part of the image. Lambda searches the slash opt extensions folder for any external extensions, preferably as a self-contained compiled binary to be portable. If the Lambda finds any extensions, it runs the extensions files it finds. They need to be executable to run or Lambda logs a permission denied error. Each extension then needs to register with Lambda to receive lifecycle events. It does this by calling the extensions API slash register with a post request. Here's the contents of the API call. Each register API call must include the Lambda extension name header with the full file name of the extension. The extension then says which events to register for. External extensions can register for invoke and or shutdown. The extensions API responds with a unique identifier which the extension uses for subsequent API calls and also returns information about the function. You can register up to 10 extensions for a function, and this limit's enforced through the register API call. If the extension init process has an error after registering for some reason, you can report that back to Lambda with a post to slash init slash error with the details of the error, and you can include a stack trace. After Lambda receives the error, it doesn't accept any further API calls, and your extension should exit, and Lambda restarts the execution environment. The extension then signals it's finished in it by sending a slash next API request to receive the next event. This is a synchronous blocking call to Lambda, so it only receives a response later when an invoke or shutdown event comes from Lambda. 
in parallel to extensions in it, and the runtime also initializes. Lambda launches the runtime process. If you've configured any internal extensions with language-specific environment variables, remember these are set via Java Tools options, Node options, or .NET startup hooks, Lambda starts the runtime with the extra parameters. For wrapper scripts, Lambda runs the script you have included, which then manages the startup of the runtime. Now, an internal extension can also register with the Extensions API with the same API path. It can register to receive invoke events as part of the runtime, but not shutdown events as that's external to the runtime. The runtime then does its initialization tasks. It reads the environment variables to get details about the function and environment, including the directory and location of the handler. And the AWS Lambda Runtime API variable which, as I showed before, has the local host and port of the runtime API. The runtime then runs the function initialization code. This is the code outside the handler. This is the function code that runs as part of a cold start or when provision concurrency is enabled. You can see here a simple example for Python or Node.js. The init code is where you load libraries or set up database connections. The stuff your actual function handler code will then use later on when it is itself invoked. The runtime then signals it's finished in it by sending its slash next API request, this time to the runtime API to receive the next event. This is a synchronous blocking call as before to Lambda, so it only receives a response when an invoke or shutdown event comes from Lambda. So now the initialization phase is complete. The init phase completes after the runtime and each registered extension say they are ready by sending next API requests. The function has also initialized. All the setup tasks are complete before the function code runs. The Lambda documentation, which I've linked to here, has a handy flow diagram for init, which goes through how the three components, extension, runtime, and function, communicate during init. You read it by going from top to bottom and following the arrows to see the communication flows. As the init is complete, Lambda is ready to progress to the invoke stage. In this phase, Lambda sends an invoke event to the runtime and to each extension that is registered for the invoke event, and then runs the function handler itself. To review, this was part one of the super deep dive into how to use the runtime and extensions API to build your own extensions. I went through the Lambda lifecycle in detail, showing the changes so far to init, and showed the API calls and how the runtime, extensions, and function interact. In the next video, I'm going to continue with building extensions using the API, looking at the invoke and shutdown phases. For plenty more information, head over to serverlessland.com with lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops, and learning paths. Everything about serverless on AWS. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about Lambda extensions, and hopefully you can put what you've learned into action. My name is Julian Wood, and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.